A pile of gray shame has taken to the streets of Las Vegas. Rob the miniature painter will wager his paints to eliminate the odds. Hey folks, it's Rob the Miniature Painter here and we're back, but actually we're starting with Army of the Dead, the zombie side game, and we're actually painting the Abomination Zeus that we gave a matte black prime to, and then after that we did a um, Hobgoblin Hue Zenithal highlight on both of them. So it's not necessarily a white Zenithal, but it is a lightish beige -ish color, and we're going to be using Army Painter Speed Paints to get through these two models quickly. Well, it's funny is in the game, there's actually three cards for this abomination. There's the mounted version, the regular version, and a masked version. However, they only give you two models. But if you'll notice later on when we're painting this miniature, this guy is holding some sort of like beam or like a steel rod from a beam or from a girder or something anyways from like concrete with a head on it that has the silver mask that he's supposed to have on the miniature. So I'm a little confused. So at first I was like, how come there's only two miniatures in this box, but there's three abominations? And when you're playing this guy, you can actually use any of the three or any of the two miniatures to represent any of the three. So it's a little confusing that they did this, actually, to be honest. I, I anyway, it's a little weird for that. By the way, if you haven't played Army of the Dead a Zombie Side game, it is very similar to Zombie Side, but I do have to tell you one thing: it is a little bit trickier when it comes to opening the vaults or uh, dealing with spawning. I'm still not sure if we got the basics right because you have a bunch of sleeper zombies in every room pretty much and they get woken up with certain actions or if you walk into the room and there's some in there, you can deal with the token as for using it with using an action, but it's a little confusing a bit and their deck of uh, spawn cards is tiny. So I'm assuming that it's not often that you spawn zombies in this thing. And there's no fatties or brutes or anything like that. It's just walkers or even, I don't even remember what they're called. I think they're called sentinels or something like that. And alphas. And the alphas are like the runners, but they look like walkers, but they're just a different color gray. So it's going to be interesting to try and say which one's which once they're painted. So I'm going to have to make sure that the bases are different on them. But anyways, I wanted to start off with Zeus here just because it's a fun model to paint or two models to paint. As you see, I've been using speed paint the whole time here. And sorry, I haven't been talking about the exact paints. I've been talking about the game, which is sometimes a little bit more fun than to hear me just say, I painted this part with this color. Uh, but anyways, uh, I want to see if people out there have gotten this game. Have they tried it? What are their thoughts on it? And uh, what do they think about me painting? Because it is a board game. It got miniatures in it, of course. And I want to paint it. And I want to try and paint it quickly. But I got to get through now some other games and I got another Kickstarter just arrived anyways and I'm trying to stay ahead of the game by being some of the first people to paint something because otherwise my channel just goes unnoticed uh, I know I again I will say it I am no master painter I have learned a lot I find my miniatures look amazing and I hope they do for you as well and I hope that if you follow my guides they give you hope into being able to start painting even to get into the, this hobby of painting miniatures because I make it easy. I don't go crazy into details. Yes, some of my videos I've done War Paints Finax, I've done some airbrushing, but that doesn't stop you from using regular speed paints or trying to follow along with colors or schemes that I'm doing or testing with zenithals or testing with uh, different kinds of slap chopping or dry brushing and so on and so forth. So keep an open mind when you watch my videos that you're, the point is to learn how to paint easily and get them nicely done for the table and impress your friends. My friends are super impressed with my games now that they, they, they we played this and they're like, wow, like the, the, the painting job is amazing. It makes the game look more vibrant, more alive. And anyway, so one thing I want to do with these ones is do bases that look fluorescent a bit. Uh, because it is in Las Vegas, it is very neon and stuff. So I'm trying. I'm gonna be trying different things on bases, not necessarily showing them on here, but in the pictures you might see them. This one I used a uh, color changing. Uh, I don't remember the name of the color. I think it's Green Stuff World or something like that. They're color changing metallic, and when you brush it on, it's not great. So 
but if you want the great effect you have to use it through an airbrush and anyways but it does a good job on the base for it and it looks kind of cool in the light it shimmers a bit kind of looks got that vegas look to it anyways i hope you've been following along here which colors i've been using i know i've been rambling on about other stuff but hey uh like you can see here uh, this is an undead horse or a zombie horse it's pretty cool i use a bunch of colors to bring out that those muscle well, one color bring out the muscle uh now on the artwork and i try and for when it comes to game board games i try and follow the artwork as much as possible instead of when i'm working on army i try and do my own scheme to it uh oh guess what bony matters folks bony matter but it's not for skin well it is on the head here that's on that stake uh but it's for pants uh and it gives it a beigeish brownish look uh, really cool. If you ever tried bony matter for pants, I suggest you do. Especially with the Zenithal highlight, it really does a good job. Uh, now, what was I saying before? Yeah, the, the zombie horse in the artwork seems to have bones protruding at certain spots, but in the on the model, you can't tell where that is. So when I come to paint uh, the skin after uh, on the horse, I was having a hard time saying, well, should I leave this part here bony-ish or not so i just went with the one color and so on and so forth now it's funny that i'm painting with aged hide here for his cape um on both the models here uh, someone was talking about it in one of the comments saying he used this for the mouth and the tongue of a lot of miniatures if the mouth is open and all of that and i could see that that is uh, actually a good idea uh i like that because it's kind of like darkish reddish pink to it like it's it's it's, it's it got the coloration of an inside of a mouth or a tongue so I will definitely have to try it on next time I find a model that has a really wide open mouth and use this on the inside. So again, thank you for that comment. I love hearing your comments on techniques or things you use colors on. Uh, I love to see this. And by the way, I haven't done a Will It Zombie video. And I'm thinking of using the zombies from this game to actually get into a Will It Zombie video. And using different kind of speed paints, different kind of undercoating to get a different result for the zombies especially for the fact like i said there's only i think oh they're shamblers are they shamblers i think it might be shamblers and alphas i can't remember geez i wish i had a better memory uh, i wish i hadn't smashed my head a couple times a few times either to not cause me to forget half the stuff i'm trying to say anyways <laughs> uh but the warrior skin this is what i'm using there on all the skin of the horse I found it came out perfectly for that brownish horse looking color. Uh, it does a good job covering uh, the Zenithal again on this. And again, see, it's not a crazy Zenithal, but it's there. And I use the airbrush, all right? I use the airbrush often to do my Zenithals. You're going to see a video coming up where I don't use the airbrush, and it makes such a difference using rattle cans for Zenithal highlighting. And that's an upcoming video, so keep an eye out for that. Hey, and don't forget, if you are new to the channel, welcome. And I hope you've played Army of the Dead, a zombie side game, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed my video, so subscribe if you're new. And if you're also back, welcome. And hit the like button, hit that notification bell. Go check out my Facebook page. You can join me on Discord. All these links are in the description. Uh, go check it out, follow, share, you know, have fun. Uh, and welcome again. Uh, now I'm using some dry blood just to emphasize uh, all the muscles that are popping out of these, these models here, especially on the horse. And it just gives a little bit of a shine to it and finishes off the muscles perfectly. And there you have it, folks. Zeus, the two models for the three types of abominations are completed, painted, ready for the table in absolutely no time at all. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you all in the next one.